Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including a hacked Model 3, Cybertruck production updates, a new 100-year Tesla battery, Tesla's next factory announced, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, some very big news about future Tesla factories. There were rumors of Tesla working on a battery supply deal with Indonesia, with Elon Musk seen meeting with the president. But now a deal appears to have been confirmed. A local report in Indonesia says, quote, Tesla agreed to build a battery and electric vehicle plant at an industrial complex in central Java province. Following stateside talks last weekend between President Joko Widodo and Tesla chief Elon Musk, investment minister Balil Lahadalia said on Wednesday. Reportedly, the deal has not yet been signed, but was agreed upon with the investment minister saying, quote, God willing, Tesla will enter Indonesia this year, but I can't announce the month yet. Let's wait because we haven't signed an agreement yet. How much investment is still being kept secret, still waiting, but this is good stuff, big stuff. There aren't many details beyond that, but factories for batteries as well as vehicles were mentioned. Elon Musk has mentioned that Tesla will announce new factories by the end of this year, so this could very well end up being one of those factories. Definitely not the first location many expected, but it could significantly help with Tesla securing a large supply of nickel in Indonesia. We'll see what the final details end up being, but many expect them to only build batteries there and not vehicles. Next up today, Tesla faces many recalls, and we talk about them very frequently on this channel, but the majority of them sound big in headlines, but are fixed with free instant over-the-air software updates. Owners usually don't realize there was a fix until they receive notice in the mail that the fix already occurred via software update. Sometimes, though, like any car, there are recalls that require service appointments. Now Tesla is making this very clear for customers. Within the Tesla app, under the service tab, there's now a notice that will show any recalls that you have for your vehicle. Here we can see the rear harness recall, and when you click on the vehicle status for the recall, it lets you know how to proceed. This particular recall says, quote, you do not need to request an appointment at this time. You will receive a notification in your Tesla app when parts are available for your vehicle. There's also a learn more button. Likely in the future, Tesla will send push notifications notifications for when parts are available or service is necessary for the recall fix. This is really great to see and it's another part of the Tesla app that keeps getting better. Overall, this app is turning into the one-stop shop for every piece of control or information you may need about your vehicle. Next up today, the biggest piece for electric cars going forward continues to be batteries. We talk about batteries all the time and how they are a huge contributor as to why Tesla is set up to make electric vehicles at scale, while other brands making really great competitors can't seem to catch up. For instance, in the US, so far in 2022, Tesla has sold over 52,000 Model Ys, 47,000 Model 3s, 9,000 Model Ss, and almost 4,900 Model Xs. Ford sold about 7,000 Mach Es, and that's the top selling EV that isn't a Tesla. It's great to see, but the numbers comparison isn't even close. Tesla continues to dominate because they are set up for battery supply with multiple suppliers, and into the future, they're working on their own 4680 cells. They're already shipping half of their cars with LFP batteries, a battery technology that doesn't use use nickel or cobalt, and that many are just starting to look into. They are also looking into manganese batteries and actively recycling batteries at their end of life. This is a huge part of their business and their main focus going forward. As you can see, they continue to work on battery supply and future technologies, and now we're hearing updates from Tesla's Advanced Battery Research Group in Canada. Tesla established this group in Canada in partnership with Jeff Don's Battery Lab. Jeff Don is a pioneer for lithium-ion battery cells and has been credited with major increases in the life cycle of these cells, ultimately leading to electric cars being a reality. Tesla renewed this contract for research through 2026 and added a new head of that team in 2021, among others. One of those newcomers, Michael Metzger and Jeff Don, are two of the authors of a new research paper that describes a, quote, nickel-based battery chemistry meant to compete with LFP battery cells on longevity while retaining the properties that people like in nickel-based batteries, like higher energy density, which enables longer range with fewer batteries for electric vehicles. They demonstrated a lot with these cells, showing an impressive retention rate over many cycles, but the real breakthrough came with them saying, quote, NMC cells, particularly those balanced and charged to 3.8 volts, show better columbic efficiency, less capacity fade, and higher energy density compared to LFP cells, and are projected to yield lifetimes approaching a century at 25 degrees Celsius. That's a battery cell approaching a cycle life of 100 years if kept at the right temperature through a battery management system. Obviously, this 
innovation is in the early stages of demonstration and development. It's not something Tesla will be releasing on 4680 cells next year or anything, but it demonstrates how quickly battery technology is moving. Many still think batteries are what they were decades ago, but they have changed enough today that Tesla data shows current battery retention at 90% after 200,000 miles driven. That already outlasts many vehicles while keeping 90% of the original battery capacity. In fact, Tesla themselves say that their battery packs are designed to outlast the vehicle itself. This makes Tesla's last far longer than people think that they really do, and with these further innovations in the future, it could make battery recycling that much easier. Rather than a full recycling process all the time, a Tesla vehicle that no longer could be driven could potentially have its battery pack simply repurposed into a used vehicle, since its longevity could be up to a century. Then the cells that have lost too much capacity can be recycled. People still seem to believe that the battery needs replacing after a few years in an electric vehicle, but soon it may be the last part that needs replacing, and the very piece that actually makes them last longer than cars ever have. Speaking of replacing battery packs though, Tesla's newest innovation is 4680 battery cells, which utilize a structural battery pack. This is something that simplifies manufacturing, allows them to add more capacity by removing layers, removing weight, and make their cars safer. The battery pack becomes a part of the structure of the vehicle, and many have pointed to this creating a big problem once the battery has any issues or gets damaged. If the pack needs replacing, this might be an immediate total loss for the car, similar to how an iPhone battery replacement can sometimes go. However, that doesn't appear to be the case. Tesla's latest service manual for the Model Y with 4680 cells reveals that their structural battery pack is in fact removable. There is a specific manual for HV battery structural pack remove and install. According to the manual, there are 143 steps involved with removing the structural battery pack. You have to remove a large part of the interior before working on the pack itself, but once removed, the vehicle will have the entire floor removed. You can see some of the photos of what the vehicle looks like underneath, and it's very odd because the entire floor of the car is gone at this step. That's at step 143, where you can see the underside of the car with no floor. Unfortunately, the photos are incredibly small and blurry in this manual. As a side note, Tesla now offers all of their manuals as a free subscription at service.tesla.com, which is where I'm scrolling through this. After step 143, where you remove the battery, there are 171 more steps to put the new battery pack in for a total of 314 steps. So as we can see, the structural battery pack is removable and replaceable. Any concerns about that are luckily no longer anything to worry about. However, hopefully this repair doesn't have to occur often. It's an incredibly long process that seems a bit more involved than a pack replacement has been thus far. As a real quick aside before we get into more news, if you haven't already, you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts, where we regularly post short form content content as well as Twitter. Those are all linked in the description below and include additional Tesla info, tips, and tricks throughout the week at RyanShotTech. Check it out. Next up today, another big concern people have with Teslas since they are such connected cars is the possibility of them being hacked. Recently, Tesla was in the news for a Bluetooth relay vulnerability that would affect cars, smart locks, smartphones, laptops, and many more. Tesla was singled out because the vulnerability was demonstrated on Teslas, which utilize Bluetooth phone keys. The report said, quote, cars with automatic keyless entry, an attacker can unlock, start, and drive a vehicle. NCC Group has confirmed and disclosed a successful exploit of this for Tesla Model 3 and Y, over 2 million of which have been sold. One easy way to combat this, at least for the driving part, is to turn on pin to drive, which you can turn on in settings. But Tesla is heavily invested in security with their cars, oftentimes offering rewards rewards for hackers that find vulnerabilities which they can patch. Back in January, a German teenager named David Colombo managed to gain, quote, remote control over 25 plus Teslas in 13 countries. Authorities were informed and the flaws have been patched since, but he published a write-up as to how he was able to do it. He was able to unlock the doors, open the windows, start keyless driving, share videos to the infotainment system, control music, climate controls, honk the horn, and flash the lights. He could surely distract a driver and turn up the music loud, but he couldn't take control or drive the vehicle unless he was actually inside. Again, that one was already patched, but now a team of IT specialists succeeded in hacking into a Tesla Model 3 at a Canadian hacking competition last week. The team, quote, managed to remotely hack into the infotainment system of a Tesla Model 3 using two zero-day vulnerabilities and a previously known sandbox escape. While their hack wasn't complex enough to win the Model 3 itself, it earned the team $75,000 USD in prize money. 
Another group at this event attempted hacking into a Tesla by exploiting its diagnostic Ethernet, but they didn't get it finished in the time limit. Their exploit will be disclosed to Tesla for patching as well. Adding tech like Tesla does into their vehicles means that it will bring the possibility of vulnerabilities like this. Some of these are a bit frightening to hear about, but it's clear that Teslas do not have the ability to be driven remotely very purposefully. In the future, we'll probably keep hearing about things like this, but the good news is that Tesla is being very proactive about this and encouraging the hacks that inform them of necessary patches. Next up today, Cybertruck production is still a ways off, but we've gotten some new updates about the machine to make the machine. What was clear at the Cyber Rodeo was that there was a ton of extra space at the Gigafactory Texas. That will expand as Model Y production scales, but they also plan to build the Cybertruck there. They will be utilizing a new larger Gigapress to make the Cybertruck exoskeleton, and that manufacturing process is a huge part of the design of that truck. It should help its price be cheaper than it would typically be for a car its size, but we'll see once it comes out and final pricing is announced. In any case, Idra, the company that makes Tesla's Gigapresses, just released a new video about their 9,000 ton Gigapress die casting machine. They are planning for a full reveal of this machine, the first of its size coming in three weeks. This is almost certainly the machine that will be building the Cybertruck, and around the same time that that was posted, someone posted about this very machine being assembled at Tesla's factory. This is the machine that will build the Cybertruck being assembled at Tesla's factory, and it's a great sign for Cybertruck production as a whole. We've seen multiple Cybertruck prototypes at this point, but for Tesla to truly scale this truck will be another story. The latest timeline is late 2023 and is dependent on the production process as well as battery supply. Tesla doesn't want to slow down the production of their current cars, some of which are already sold out for over a year. We might finally start seeing a bit more progress in that area, but for now, a Cybertruck prototype was spotted out in Michigan. Someone posted on Reddit and said, quote, found a Tesla booth at Michigan Formula SAE competition and saw the Cybertruck for the first time in real life. It's a great close-up photo of the Cybertruck and shows how different the stainless steel on this truck can look in different lighting scenarios. Here, it almost looks gold. This is the latest prototype with windshield wiper, side mirrors, no door handles, and buttons to open the side doors, seemingly when they won't open automatically. The Cybertruck was also filmed at the event driving a bit in the parking lot. One thing to notice here is that all windows can roll down 100%. Great to see that truck in the wild, and hopefully sometime next year, they will actually be able to start deliveries. We'll see how many Rivians, F-150 Lightnings, and Hummer EVs are on the road before Tesla launches this. Next up today, one of Tesla's biggest advantages is their supercharger network. No other brand has a dedicated charging network for their vehicles, and Tesla is one of the biggest out there. They are expanding their supercharger network each day, posting about new locations they open up regularly on their Tesla charging Twitter account. It's not an exaggeration to say each day, because scrolling through this account often shows multiple locations opening on a given day. Now they are opening up their chargers to other electric vehicles in other countries. They just recently expanded by opening up chargers in France, the Netherlands, Norway, the UK, Spain, Sweden, Belgium, and Austria. For now, now this is a pilot program to see how it works, letting other EVs charge there, but Tesla just managed to become the quote, largest 150 kilowatt plus public fast charging network in Europe. They essentially did this overnight by flipping a switch. They simply opened these chargers up to other vehicles and already were the biggest network. Tesla's head of supercharging in EMEA said quote, becoming the largest 150 kilowatt plus CPO instantly. Today we've expanded the non-Tesla supercharging pilot to Austria, Belgium, Spain, Sweden, and the UK in addition to our existing pilot sites in the Netherlands, France, and Norway, accelerating the transition to a sustainable future for everyone. What this shows is how expansive Tesla's network already is. When they open up chargers to all vehicles, they already have more than third-party charging providers do. Very impressive to see, and it will be very interesting to watch as Tesla expands this further. It will take some time for their charging infrastructure to get to a place where congestion isn't a concern in the US, but once they get there, it will make buying any EV in the US just that much easier. Next up today, a a Tesla supercharger drive-in is something that Elon Musk has talked about for a while now. On January 8th, 2018, he tweeted, quote, gonna put an old school drive-in roller skates and rock restaurant at one of the new Tesla supercharger locations in LA. Nothing has come of that yet, but in April of 2021, he said, major new supercharger station coming to Santa Monica soon, hoping to have 50s diner and 100 best movie clips playing too. Thanks, Santa Monica City. Still, nothing came of that, but Tesla has now officially submitted plans for a larger supercharger in Santa Monica featuring a drive-in movie theater. Reportedly, the site will be at 7001 West Santa Monica Boulevard in Los Angeles and feature 34 chargers. 29 of those will be V3 250 kilowatt chargers. The plans 
plans show the layout with two movie screens in areas viewable by people in their cars or eating at a restaurant. The filing itself says, quote, finally, there will be two movie screens for viewing by people charging their cars and or eating in the restaurant. The movies to be shown will be features lasting approximately the same amount of time as it takes to charge a vehicle, around 30 minutes. The two screens will be on both north and west property lines of the site to allow people to view screens from their vehicles and from the rooftop seating area. A decorative bamboo landscape screen will be planted on the property lines to frame both movie screens. The operational hours for the drive-in movie theater will be from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. pursuant to the commercial corner standards. This is the most detailed info we've gotten about this, and it's definitely looking like a very cool project. It will surely be one of the busiest superchargers, but if it comes, it's more proof that Elon usually delivers on what he says he'll do eventually. Speaking of Elon time though, Elon's latest timelines for FSD told to reporters in Brazil has been delayed again. After recently saying FSD could be achieved this year, as he has been saying each year for a while now, he now is saying that Tesla will have self-driving cars without the need for people behind the wheel a year from now, around mid-2023. That's another pushback to this deadline that I sincerely sincerely hope many aren't holding on to. Elon has talked about this for years now, and the important thing is that regardless of these delays, they are actively working on full self-driving and improving on it constantly. Still, I don't recommend buying the $12,000 FSD package unless you really like investing in the future and waiting on these updates. Last up today, BYD has begun pre-orders of their SEAL vehicle in China. This will start under $32,000 and be a direct Tesla Model 3 competitor. The cheapest trim is standard range rear-wheel drive and includes a CLTC range of of 342 miles, which is far more exaggerated than the EPA standard. For instance, the Model 3 on CLTC is rated at 346 miles of range and starts about $10,000 more expensive there. Pre-orders are open for this car and it's expected to start customer deliveries in the coming months. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest for the 4680 Model Y, which is finally expanding orders, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.